Hello and welcome back to On Point Wargaming. Uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about my recent foray into painting 15mm figures. Now I can already hear people saying another project Steve. Well why are you painting 15mm? Well the reason is this. Chain of Command by Two Fat Lardies. Now I've, I've had these rules for a while but I've never had the, the, the time to really expand into it or, or have a few games. Uh, recently in a Facebook discussion however quite a few people I've been telling me that Chain of Command in 15mm is a great scale to play at. The rules themselves are really good, uh, specifically the patrol phase, the jump off points and the combat mechanics. From the battle reports that I've watched it really represents the confusing and fluid nature of combat. So deciding to do Chain of Command in 15mm, I again turned to my infamous bits boxes and rather remarkably managed to complete two very basic German and US armies just from old Flames of War figures that I had lying around I hadn't used in years. Now I've been painting the German infantry first and in this video I'm going to paint um, this uh, reconnaissance uh, section here uh, and outline what paints and techniques I've used and also discuss some hints and tips that I found when painting at this scale. Um, I mean I just happen to be painting these for chain of command they could always be used for flames of war, uh, battle group and also bolt action at 15mm. The team that I'm painting consists of a junior leader, an MG42 team and two riflemen. Um, they're transported in an SDKFZ 250 uh, that I'll be picking up soon but this is what the basic squad looks like. As you can see, uh, they're mounted on coins. Uh, one pence piece is for single figures and a two pence piece for the MG42. Um, as with previous videos that I've done um, surrounding um, painting techniques, I've gone for a limited palette with these and I'll outline the paints that I've used uh, as, I, as I go ahead. Uh, but to start with, these guys will be primed and given an all over base coat of Vallejo German field grey. So I'll crack on and I'll be back once I've completed this. So welcome back. Um, the, base, the team has been base coated and they look something like this. Now this base coat is applied in two thin coats and this helps to um, add a good coverage um, to each of the figures. Uh, now the base coat is dry, it's time to add the details. Uh, before I do this, I'll outline the colours um, that I'm going to use. For webbing, uh, entrenching tools, packs and water bottles, I'm going to use Vallejo Black Brown. Uh, for rifles, machine gun stocks and boots, um, I use Burnt Umber. For steel helmets and gaiters, I use dark rubber and I use khaki grey uh, for the bread bag. For covered helmets and the gas mask canisters, I'm just going to leave these in field grey and pick these out with highlights uh, later on in the process. Uh, the ammunition boxes that are being carried are painted using olive grey. And lastly, for the flesh, I use basic skin tone. As this we're getting a wash, I don't complete any metallics on the figures at this stage as the wash, the, the wash will discolour. Um, a metallic paint added at this point in the process. With that done, I'm going to get this part of the process completed and I'll see you all back in a short while. See you in a bit. And welcome back. So the equipment and the weapons have all been painted and the team looks something like this. As you can see, they're looking really very basic, uh, a bit rough and ready, and there's a few mistakes, a few errors, some splashes here and there. But at the end of the day, it's a 15 mil team. The, the, by the very nature of the scale, there's gonna be mistakes. The good thing is, with the washes and the highlights, these mistakes will easily be covered. Anyone that's seen any of my paints and videos uh, previously will know that um, for washes, I swear by Agrax Earthshade by Citadel. I love this wash and uh, with, with this uh, team, it's no exception, they'll be getting a full wash of Agrax Earthshade. Uh, once that wash is completely dried, I will then go in with a smaller brush, 
to apply Reichland Flesh Shade to any, any skin areas on the figure. What this does, it'll give a bit of contrast compared to the rest of the, uh, rest of the figure, but it also helps with the uh, highlighting of the flesh, which is the next stage of the process. So I'm going to get my uh, my wash brush out, uh, get these figures washed um, with Agrax Earth Shade and Reichland Flesh Shade, and I'll be back in a bit. See you soon. And we're back. So, as you can see from this picture here, the washes have now fully dried and it's time to add highlights. Now at this scale, what I found is the highlights can be very, very minimal. So what I'm gonna do is very simply add a drop of ivory to the original color and leave it at that. Um, just apply these to kind of the extreme highlights on the figure and this tends to help the figure stand out or, or pop more. What I'll do is I'll highlight the skin, the uniform and the equipment. Again, nothing too detailed, just pick out the extreme highlights. At this stage, I'll also be adding the metallic parts to the weapons. For the MG42 team, I'll use a mix of dark rubber and Vallejo gunmetal grey. But for the metallic parts of the rifle, what, I, what I've opted to do is just use natural steel. This is a, a little bit more brighter than the dark rubber and gunmetal grain mix, but it makes the parts of the rifle really stand out. So they're quite small in comparison to the rest of the figure. I think it just gives it a, a kind of a nice, a nice look to the to the rifle once it's done. Right, it's time to crack on with the highlights and the detailing, and I'll be back in a short while. See you soon. And welcome back again. So that's the team pretty much finished with most of the highlights and details added. Now it's just time to add those, those little last details. Uh, these include the Pfaffenfarben, um, uniform details and the Zeltbarm. For infantry, I use ivory, but as, as these will be recon, um, armored recon at that, I've gone for a gold yellow cover for the Pfaffenfarben. Um, for the Zeltbarn, I simply use burnt umber and Citadel Elysian Green um, to apply a very basic camouflage. Um, with these details, it, that, the, 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 the squad pretty much finished. So I'm going to get on with those and I'll be back shortly. And with that, there you have it. The entire squad is completed. Um, I'm going to show a picture of the, of the completed team now, um, but I'll also throw in some photographs of the two inventory sections and the HQ unit that are completed in the last week or so, um, just to show you um, the different figures within within the army. Now these were painted in exactly the same way as I've demonstrated today, but I thought I'd point out how I completed uh, different individual figures um, from these infantry sections on the HQ. Now the Panzer Shrek and the Panzer Faust were both painted using khaki grey and highlight of the dab of ivory to the original khaki grey over that Agrax Earthshade wash. Um, the camouflage helmets, uh, again, very simply had Citadel Elysian Green added to the, the leaves and the foliage on them. And the officer's details were picked out with ivory, dark rubber, and Mephiston red. Um, I've now completed 28 figures in very little time at all. When the rest of the, the army is completed, I'll move on to painting the US parachute infantry, as I see all of our chain of command games being set in around 1944-1945, after D-Day and the push into Germany. I've always been interested in this period, and it'd be great to game at this scale. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you're a 15 millimeter painter, I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please post any comments below. Now, I'm no professional painter by any stretch of the imagination, but the way I've gone about painting these, I've really enjoyed it, and I think they're actually quite effective, so I'm looking forward to, to getting the rest of them completed in the very near future. 
Well, thanks for watching. Uh, as always, take care, make your dice roll well, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now.